to the July edition, uh, July 2013 edition of Why So Serious. Brogan. Murray. Mary. Brian. Why So Serious. Yay. Here we are in Brogan's abode. We're going to talk about the best three and worst three movies of July and then the three movies we're most looking forward to seeing in August. So, third best one for July 2013 was... The Conjuring. I haven't seen, so I'm just gonna, you know. Uh, the Conjuring is a love letter of sorts to 70s horror movies. It stars Vera Farmiga and Patrick Wilson as a married couple who are also demonologists come exorcists. Uh, and they visit a house owned by Lily Taylor and Ron Livingston and their five daughters because they believe the house is haunted. So they come in and they have to find proof that the house is indeed haunted before they can get permission from the Vatican to exorcise exorcise, not exorcise, the ghosts from the house. Uh, that's it for the plot. But Maybe they were lady to ghosts and they needed exorcise. Yeah, they needed, they were too fat to leave the house. Yeah. Fat ghosts. Fat ghosts. I would watch that film. Fat ghost. <laughs> sounds like a Marlon Wayans <laughs> film though, in fairness. It does. It sounds yeah. like something Tracy Morgan would do in 30 Rock. Yeah. It's not very original at all. It kind of like stitches together stuff from like the Amityville Horror, The Exorcist, The Shining, Poltergeist, it, the director's own last film, Insidious, but it does it so well that it's still really, really great. It's one of the most entertaining films I've seen this year. Mm. It's not like, it won't keep you awake at night, but it will frighten you at the time. It's like a ghost train more than something, you know. A lingering hour. Yeah. It might like, keep me awake at night, hence the reason I haven't seen it. And will not see it. So mm -hmm. yes, it's very good. Uh, I do fully recommend any fans of horror movies to go see it because you will love it. Uh, 8 out of 10. Third worst. Boo. Boo Earns. Was. The Frozen Ground. Based on a true story about a serial killer in Alaska, um, Nicolas Cage plays the policeman, the police officer, investigating the disappearance and murder of all these girls. And he's two weeks away from moving away from the area, like, ugh. Pretty yeah. much Morgan Freeman in Seven. Pretty much every cop movie cliche you can think of, like, mm. oh no, I can't do this, do, can't take this case. I'm retired tomorrow. Uh, me and my wife are going to that boat. Yeah. They live forever. Yeah. And um, yeah, Vanessa <laughs> Hutchins is um, one of the girls who escapes and the biggest key to the case and all the rest of it. Within five minutes of the film starting, you know that John Cusack is the killer. Mm. Like, you, there's no guesswork involved in here, there's no is he or isn't. Mm. And it's just basically a case of trying to pin him down and catch him. and. Really uninteresting. Um, Vanessa Hutchins perhaps gives the best performance of her career so far, but she's not enough to carry John Cusack doing the John Cusack tropes that he's doing and Nicolas Cage doing the Nicolas Cagey tropes that he's doing. Sorry, Brian. I'm sorry. Brian loves Nicolas Cage. Yeah. Loves him. Uh, I actually didn't mind John Cusack so much in this. I was interested to see that he's following on that nasty role that he did in The Paperboy. Yeah, but that was so much better. It was so much better, but it, he does seem to be chipping away a little bit at the whole... Yeah, I'm such a nice guy, I love my movies. They mm. seem to be kind of working his new niche as like a slimy villain. It's working for him. And totally, it's mm. a colour that looks good on him. Yeah. But I do agree it was a bit boring. Yeah, it totally was. One of the most paint by numbers serial killer thrillers I've and ever seen. Based on a true story, you'd think it would be a bit more interesting. But yeah, it's about a man who kills strippers. How, how do you make that boring? <laughs> <laughs> you did? Yeah. Okay. Um, four out of ten? Yeah, I'd agree with that. Yeah. Yep. Second best. Blackfish. Blackfish is... A it's about a blackfish. About <laughs> a black whale, a killer whale, uh, called Tilikum, who may or may not, depending on who you ask, have killed at least three people while in captivity. So this is a better um, serial killer thriller than The Frozen Ground? Yes, it is. Wow. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. uh, it goes into some detail about... How Sea World are defending Tilcom, saying that it was, you know, accidental death or whatever. But it's quite obvious that uh, there's, there's evidence shown that killer whales in the wild have actually never killed anyone. anyone in the history of recorded history. But in captivity, killer whales have killed. I think they said like forty or ninety. It was a big number. It was more than zero, anyway. Well, I've seen Rustin Bell. That killer whale just it killed down killed on Marion Cotillard's legs. Just numb. Yeah. She was still it was actually one part of documentary, one part of, I guess horror film. It was actually kind of terrifying. Have you seen it? No. Oh. It was yeah, it was, it was really 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 scary. Somebody uh like there's actual footage of just people in SeaWorld with this killer whale, uh, when they go off on one and decide to uh 
like chow down on one of their trainers and it's properly, properly terrifying. Uh, cannot recommend it enough. If there wasn't this number one film, I would like this probably the best documentary of the year. But it's not. Mm. It's only the second best documentary of this month. So, uh, Out of it's ten? No, I'd say eight and a half. Ooh. Yeah. Strong contender. Strong contender. Strong. Mm. Second worst. Second worst. No surprises here. Smurfs 2. Number two is Smurfs 2, which mm. is a number two. Mm. Um, Gargamel's causing trouble, kidnapping Smurfs. It's... Smurfs have to get Neil Patrick Harris to help them and Brenda Gleeson. And um, yeah, that's about all you need to know. It just sucked. To do, to, there's no happiness here. No. There's just... Uh, if you're four years old, you might like it. Yeah. If you're anything above that, there's, there's nothing here for you. No. Like, there will be five year old, five year olds going, this is a bit low, bro. It's <laughs> the disturbing five year old. This is a bit dull. Yeah. Uh, and there's a very odd subtext I mentioned to you yeah. before as well, where, like, Neil Patrick Harris' stepdad is Brendan Gleeson, and they don't get on. And Gargamel created the Smurfette, who is Katie voiced Perry. by Katy Perry. And she's so irritating. She, uh, oh. And there's a lot of sources of irritants in this one. And like it's this whole thing about like if you're adopted or if you have a stepfather or if you're a foster child, that's totally okay. You're like still a normal person. Unless like Katy Perry does, there's a big fear that Katy Perry will want to get to know her dad. Gargamel. Gargamel. Uh, and that like makes her evil. Mm. So there's this really nasty taste of, you know, don't go finding your original parents yeah. if you're adopted because uh, that's not cool and you probably will be evil. Yeah. Not a nice, not a nice message to send. And also, there's a really annoying CGI cat. The Paris looked really nice. Paris did look really nice. Yeah, was, yeah was, some really nice cinematography going yeah. on there. Yeah, and Bernard Gleeson and uh, Hank Azaria just just fucked their whole lives yeah. into that role. Not a single fuck was given by either one of them. No, they're just like, I don't care how I look. Yeah. Especially when Bernard Gleeson gets turned into a duck mm -hmm. and quacks. And it turns into a half man, half duck, and falls around the street naked. Doesn't care. Does not a single fuck was given on set that day. So good not for him. One. Yeah. I'm sure he got quite an amount of money. Yeah. For uh, for that role. Yeah. Uh, two out of ten. Yeah, absolutely. Agree with you. Our number one movie of July 2013 is The Act of Killing. You need to be uh, like have had a lot of sugar. No, I don't know. A lot no, of Red Bull. No, because you might crash halfway through the film and then you'd be dead. It's long. It's long as well. Um, but, fuck me. Yeah. I'll let you tell the, the people what it's sadly about. Um, it was the late 70s. There was a... Yep. There was a Political uprising or something in Indonesia? Yeah, and uh, there were all these um, street gangs who were brought in to be contract killers of Buddhists in Indonesia. So... The documentary crew went over to interview the leaders of these gangs, these sort of mercenaries, about what they'd done and the people that they've killed and all the rest of it. And during the course of the discussion, they decided to get them to act out what they've actually done and what they remember of what they've done in the past. So at the beginning of the film, this guy, Anwar Congo, who was one of the ringleaders, is up on this rooftop going, yeah, I think I killed about, you know, a thousand people on this rooftop. Um, and acts out how he did it with like a, a garrote and stuff and he's like yeah if you just pull like this like the head will come straight off and he's dancing on the rooftop and he's completely unaffected by what has happened to him but during the course of acting out and recreating the scenes from the films some of them are doing quite well some of them are doing really shoddily and really bizarrely yeah there's a transvestite mermaid shows up at one point yeah for some reason and dances out of the mouth of a giant paper mache fish yeah, yeah. really weird um and during the course of acting it out, it actually starts to hit them what they've actually done. And, you know, 30, 40 years later, whatever it is, it starts to hit them and they start to be affected by what they've done. And it's just... It's harrowing. It is. It's harrowing. Like, you you know that what they've done is horrific. But it's actually really suspenseful. You're watching the film going, are they actually going to realise what they've done? Because, you know, we as right-thinking members of society have already realised what they've done is evil and wrong and all the rest of it. But watching them come to the realisation... It's fascinating, terrifying, and just... Brilliant. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's one of those films that you like. everyone should see because it's, it feels really important. Mm. And it's a really good example of how cinema is in itself a form of therapy, in a, to an extent. Yeah. 
But it is, again, it's like, you have to be really in the right frame of mind for you. Really if, if you're not, then it, you want to enjoy it. You probably want to laugh through it all. You want to understand, or want to understand, like, where they're coming from. And it's, but, like, if, if you are open to it, it is one of those cinematic experiences that, like, will remain with you forever. I don't know if it's a film that you can enjoy, but it's certainly a film that you can appreciate. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, 9 out of 10. 9 out of 10, indeed. Worst film, boo, of... July 2013 was the internship I was embarrassed watching this film I was embarrassed to be watching it yeah uh, Arm Wilson and Vince Vaughn did very good work together in Wedding Crashers mm -hmm. and all of that seems to have gone basically you pay, play two 40-ish year old men who don't know what the internet is I'm a stupid old man I don't know what a Google is what's a Google -y? we need to go on the line and find the oh, so they somehow talk themselves into getting a job or an internship at Google, which will lead to them potentially getting a job at Google. Uh, and that's it. It's like a pushing two hours of all the people don't understand what a computer is. But because they have a better work ethic than these young kids these days who only know how to work online, that means that they're probably better people Yeah, they than can we understand are. people because they've been working with we people have, and yeah, not in a virtual people world. People skills. It's it's not funny, but it's it, not funny. neither of them are funny. It's like the director didn't know when to tell them that they weren't being funny. I think the director just said the camera rolling and went off for lunch for most Ad -lib. of them. Just, Ad -lib. Yeah, just go. Rose Burns completely wasted in a really shockingly sexist role. Shockingly sexist, yeah. Um, and there's a lot of racism going on there. A lot yeah. of racial stereotypes going on there. Yeah. It's just painful. The most exciting part was when. One of them slid down the slide in Google. I was like, oh, yeah, that looks I want kind a slide. Of fun. Yeah, I want a slide. Maybe I can put one in over here. Uh, one out of ten. <laughs> oh, you're being really generous. I'm giving it zero out of ten. Wow. Zero. There is no redeeming feature about this film at all. So a half. Yeah. For existing. A half. So that's the best and worst of July 2013. Uh, the three movies we're most looking forward to seeing in August. Alicia, Matt Damon, and Jerry Foster, Foster and Shanda Copley in Nell Blomkamp's. Am I saying that right? Yeah. Blomkamp? Something like that, yeah. Uh, oh, next sorry. movie oh, after District 9, it's another big sci fi action uh, movie with political subtext. Yes. Kick Ass 2. Uh, sequel kick to ass. Kick Ass. I'll tell you, it's not about that, really. Yeah. Way, way back. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, it's written by um, the Dean from Community. Oh my god, what's his name? Jim Rash. Jim Rash. Jim Rash. Who won an Oscar for the script for The Descendants. This is his next film that he has um, written and... Co-directed. Co-directed? Yeah. Yes. And I'm very excited about it. And that's all you need to know. Great uh, cast. Steve Carell. Yeah. Um, Tony Collette. Uh, and that dude that everyone in the world loves, Sam Rockwell. Oh, everyone loves Sam Rockwell. Sam Rockwell. That's August. Also happening in August is the next YSO series screening. Mm. The previous one went really well. Big thanks to uh, Grant Social for letting us screen it, Cineworld and Ian Howard. Howard for prizes and for all of you for coming. It was great, Galaxy <laughs> Quest is a great movie. Our next one, we haven't uh, absolutely confirmed the date. date yet. It'll probably it'll be the end of August, possibly the last Wednesday of August, but don't take a word. Keep an eye on our Twitter and Facebook pages yes. to find out what the date is. But in the meantime, we can reveal what the film will be. <gasps> Mary can't do it because it's on the camera. It's a Yay! Uh, one of my favourite comedies of all time, I have to say. Uh, and something I haven't seen on the telly in years. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Fantastic so comedy. really looking forward to that. So until so, then. Come and join us in the Grand Social. We will confirm the date uh, slightly closer to the time, but come and join us. Have a few drinks with us. Watch the birdcage. It's going to be a great night. It's going to be a great night. Yeah. It was going to be a good time. Yeah. Uh, until then. Mary. Brian. Brogan. Rody! Well, that's as it is. Yay! July 2013, darling. <laughs> <laughs>